Hello viewers, welcome to our lecture series on Indian ethos in management and I am going to tell you about Indian ethics and the spirit of development uh, in our continuing discussion and this is going to be part 5 of our lectures on Indian eth ethics and uh, the spirit of development. And uh, in the previous lecture of mine, I told you about YVK foundations of Indian management where we had uh, discussed the first concept of it that what is yoga and we have to still uh, discuss about Vedanta and Kosha theories. And after that, we will talk about the Udyoga as yoga, considering industry as yoga and uh, KPCL model that is knowledge, power, capital and labor. And eventually, we will conclude this uh, topic with the, with the topic of, uh, with the sub topic of management as a joy of living. So, let us uh, uh, recapitulate what we had discussed uh, with regard to YVK foundations of Indian management. YVK actually is an acronym which represents uh, three eastern uh, doors that can provide future foundations for uh, what you call as new age corporate entities or new age corporate management. So, this YVK foundation is basically the essence of uh, Indian uh, style of management where we will be telling you about this acronym where Y stands for yoga, V stands for Vedanta and K stands for Kosha theories. So, uh, these theories have actually a universal application as well as they have universal appeal as I have been telling you that uh, they are not only having universal applications but also the universal appeal. They are being accepted worldwide uh, because of their increasing relevance and uh, the timeliness. They, they understand that why it is relevant, why it is so important for uh, corporate entities as on day or what you call as corporate uh, entities of 21st century. So, during recent years considerable uh, research work has been done by Indian scholars to open the, uh, the door, the eastern, what you call as eastern doors to the world of management and uh, uh, the pioneering initiatives were already discussed by me in the previous lecture of uh, mine. So, I will not be repeating that. So, uh, now let us talk about yoga, considering yoga that is Udyoga as yoga. Uh, Indian uh, word of industry uh, is, is, is uh, Udyog which contains the word yoga. If we translate the term industry uh, in Hindi language, we call it Udyog and uh, it contains the word uh, yoga into it. This Udyoga can indeed be considered as a new yoga and this yoga th uh, theory of management suggests that there should be harmony and balance between various factors of creation. And uh, when we talk about KPCL model uh, here, another acronym comes, uh, comes which is known as uh, knowledge, power, capital and uh, uh, labor. So, KPCL represents again another acronym uh, and here it is pertinent to uh, discuss about KPCL before we go ahead with Vedanta and Kosha theories of YVK model. So, K stands for knowledge, P stands for power that is uh, leadership and managerial uh, capacity what you call as and uh, C stands for capital and uh, labor is uh, represented by the, by the alphabet L. So, this KPCL model of organization is rooted in harmony and uh, the harmonization of four factors of creation which is known as KPC and L. So, KPCL represents uh, these four important factors of creation and it represents the yoga theory of management. Again, it is, it is having an addition that is why we call it uh, as a representative of the yoga theory of management and we all understand that nowadays in corporate entities due to increasing level of uh, intense competition, the stress has become the integral part of uh, business processes and even employees at times they, they complain with this issue that we are under tremendous stress and we do not know how to, how to manage with that, how to bear with that. So, we all understand that stress management has been an important concern for the corporate entities and, and if we try to find the, the solution to this uh, persistent problem of uh, stress management, st managing stress, how to manage the stress, uh, yoga actually acquired popularity as a stress management technique and it is very effective also. It, it increases the efficiency and when we talk about yoga, within the yoga we have uh, another concept called uh, transcendental meditation for which a keyword called TM is being used increasingly and it, it entered the textbooks of management as a tool for stress management that if you really wish to manage the stress in your business uh, organization, the TM is one of the most important and the most sought after tool with regard to uh, managing the stress which we call as transcendental meditation. So, meditation is another uh, way which is which is basically part and parcel of yoga where we meditate to, to come out of the stress which is actually forcing us, which is actually you know causing hindrance into our uh, routine processes, routine activities. 
although yoga theory can provide us a new foundational premise for the new corporate model wherein there is a balancing between profit people and purpose so we understand that it is offering us an opportunity where you have to make a balance you have to strike a balance between among the profit people and purpose and in fact the concept of udyoga as a yoga captures the essence of india's management philosophy in one simple phrase so if we take uh, consider udyoga yoga is automatically included into it because we understand that when you are working in an uh, in a setup which is of uh, which is actually an industry you actually require a lot of uh, hard work to do so apart from your your mental exercise you have a lot of physical exercise also there physically you are involved mentally you are involved and you have to put all efforts to to synergize all the resources in order to get your outcome so in that case the yoga is emerging as a stress buster where you can uh, come out of stress with that uh, with the help of yoga so in yvk theory the first important uh, component was yoga and in order to understand yoga we need to understand what is transcendental meditation so that meditation will not uh, discuss in detail because uh, when it comes to practicality we can always find reference um, in the literature of yoga where what is transcendental meditation the way it is being done so that the the keyword i have uh, uh, told you i have communicated to you and you can always refer to those resources of transcendental meditation you can go to the literature of that and uh, honestly speaking these uh, tools of yoga they are really very effective and they they are they are very effective and very efficient they actually have positive impact on the efficiency and effectiveness of our workforce now moving ahead to the second alphabet of the acronym yvk the second one is vedanta where we talk about towards vedanta in practice and vedanta in management it has been gaining significance because of vedantic model of human being as divine being we are considering human being as divine being and it it takes us uh, far beyond the maslow's conceptualization of human being in terms of hierarchy of needs because when we talk about motivating people understanding people we have to understand that maslow's uh, theory of need hierarchy is in front of us which says that if we uh, somehow understand that at what which which, which uh, need is very much prominent for a, for the person who is working in the company if you simply satisfy that need the person will get motivated or will uh, feel motivated to uh, work or to contribute towards the achievement of the goals of organization but here it is it is much ahead from what maslow wanted to say the, the vedanta in management it has been uh, it is gaining significance because of this only because here we consider every human being to be a divine soul we understand that a person is supposed person is bound to work by uh, 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 you can say by default a person is uh, having positive attitude having all positivity in uh, his or her appearance in his his or her personality now it is only up to us to to identify that uh, divinity inside us inside each and every individual so it 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 never says that a person is not willing to work or person is having negative attitude it always talk considers every human being to be a divine being divine soul and uh, if we uh, talk about swami vivekananda's uh, concept of practical vedanta it is also finding its application in management of institutions and organization and the concept of management by uh, management by by, uh, by uh, consciousness is gaining acceptance in contrast to management by objectives gone are the days when we used to talk about only management by objectives putting objective of an organization as a top most motive of any business entity now we talk about management by consciousness that as a conscious uh, uh, person since we are human being we do understand that the organization cannot survive unless it uh, it achieves its goal the organization the company cannot survive unless it it is it is uh, making profit it is gaining profit so management by objective is uh, it it uh, represents the teleological approach and it ignored the deontological and uh, virtue ethics approaches which is of immense importance and uh, management by values is now the key note uh, or or you can say the order of the day we talk about the value based management we talk about the value based uh, behavior we talk about the value centric behavior of an employee who is working in a company imagine a workplace where people are very much uh, conscious about about the value system vedantic principles they do provide conceptual foundations for implementing the ideas of spirituality at workplace 
imagine we are considering each and every colleague of ours as a divine soul and uh, we we honor their their uh, virtues we honor their uh, qualities of uh, of of doing something better of giving contributing positively towards the achievement of the goal of the organization and and this attitude actually make workplace more uh, synergistic and harmonic in nature so so the kind of harmony we are going to witness the moment we follow the manage, the value based management is 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 uh, matchless we we cannot find any substitute to that and vedanta can also be interpreted as uh, ved ananta that is uh, uh, eternal knowledge if we if we uh, uh, separate these two word th this these two words ved and ananta ananta means the eternal and ved is uh, representing knowledge so we are talking about a knowledge which is which is eternal and nowadays knowledge is power if you have knowledge definitely you can win you can overcome any situation whether it is uh, whether it is very complex or it is complex or you are finding it to be of intense competition so management by values is now the order of the day and in this uh, interpretation if we interpret it like this it represents the eternal values emphasized by all spiritual traditions of the world and offers a basis for spiritual conferencism as well as value based management so value based management is now the order of the day we all understand and vedanta here in this yvk uh, model vedanta is representing that eternal knowledge that is ved ananta ananta means infinite eternal and uh, ved we understand it represent the knowledge so we are talking about the knowledge which is eternal in nature now moving ahead to the third important aspect of yvk model the third one is kosha uh, theories where we talk about five kosha uh, energies we we have already discussed about panch koshas and, and now we'll talk about that uh, energy system the five koshas uh, kosha energies kosha theory rooted in panch kosha model of evolution of uh, consciousness and it offers new directions for uh, self evolution and self development and uh, it it is essentially an energy system uh, theory indicating five types of energy it is indicating uh, the the different types of energy and it classifies energy in five different uh, types and it says that the first one is known as cosmic energy which is represented by k then oceanic uh, energy that is o spiritual energy that is s and uh, uh, the h is representing the heart energy and uh, a is uh, representing animalistic energy so unlike that uh, basic uh, classification of kosha theory is the panch koshas here it is it is taking kosha as an acronym and uh, uh, giving meaning to cosmic energy oceanic energy spiritual energy heart energy and animalistic energy now I'll, i'll be telling you one by one what they are if we take the heart energy it represents the emotional energy and animalistic energy represents the brutal forces the brute forces where we get more aggressive so heart energy is uh, telling us about the emotional quotient of a person whereas animalistic uh, energy represents the brutal forces or what you call as the tamas inside a person the the negative forces the brute forces uh, inside a personality and it may be indicated that kosha theory can also be considered as an extension of uh, osha model there is another model which is available in the literature in the name of osha model wherein this osha stands for oneness spiritual humanistic and animalistic aspect of human existence so there is lot of uh, research going on in this direction where we find uh, the the kosha to be an extension of osha so be, so if we talk about the osha model it it stands for oneness spirituality humanistic and animalistic aspect of human existence so this model is rooted in indian guna theory if we try to find origin to uh, this entire discourse or discussion we find that they are rooted in indian guna theory or what you call as the theory of merit wherein human behavior is analyzed in terms of satvik uh, rajasik and tamasik satvik rajasik and tamasik so so uh, uh, tamasik is representing animalistic qualities so whether you talk about uh, osha model or you talk about kosha model they are rooted in they they emanate from the the very basic uh, indian guna theory which i told you at the very outset of our discussion when we started discussing about indian ethos in management and i told you about uh, the the guna theory that how it is important 
and imagine the 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 way the researchers have uh, started working in the field of uh, this uh, indian ethos and they developed so many models so the same guna theory is analyzed in different names whether you call it kosha model or you call it osha model so all these models they basically point their they they find their origin in the in the ancient indian guna theory where we talk about where we analyze the human behavior in terms of satvik rajasik and tamasik satvik is representing spiritual rajasik represents humanistic and tamasik represents animalistic qualities of a person and it may further uh, be noted here i would like you to to uh, give greater emphasis that uh, on this that kosha theory could also be viewed as a combination of theory k and the osha model because if you if you read uh, the theory k uh, which which takes a cosmic perspective wherein the entire globe is one family uh, to which we call as vasudhaiva kutumbakam uh, and and in this very concept of vasudhaiva kutumbakam the theory k is talking about the cosmic perspective the the holistic perspective the overall uh, perspective of the entire world considering it as a family and we already understand that we believe in the in the in the uh, uh, in the essence of vasudhaiva kutumbakam we consider the entire world to be our family and consider ourselves as part of that family as member of that family so theory k also uh, 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 is viewed uh, is is considering organization as kutumb or community in hindi uh, we call it kutumb kutumb means the family the community so this k is uh, representing the term kutumb so the, those ancient scriptures ancient knowledge is now being um, being uh, carried forward in different names in different uh, interpretations by the way of different types of analysis but the point of origin remains the same that it is indian guna theory where we talk about uh, the the rajasik tamasik and satvik gunas and uh, those uh, theories are now applied now if you look at the application aspect of this kosha model how it is being applied or implemented so when kosha model is applied in organizational context in the context of any company it represents the level of consciousness of that organizational entity and it also and also its energy spectrum and energy channelizing systems so if you really wish to apply this kosha model into your company now you have to consider the you have to understand that it represents the level of consciousness of your company what is the level of consciousness to what extent my company is conscious towards the 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 gunas of a person who is working towards the merits of a human being who is working in my company as a workforce and also uh, its energy spectrum and the way we have to channelize this this energy system we all know that energy is never lost it it is it, it is always presented it is always present so it is up to you to channelize it energy is there we have to channelize uh, it and for that we need to have energy channelizing system so leaders and managers uh, they they use uh, several types of uh, energies of consciousness somebody may call it uh, silent or latent spiritual energies which is called as satvik energy that you are making good use of the consciousness and you you are making use of silent or latent spiritual energies which which is not very much uh, 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 flaunted or very much communicated and they are regarded as satvik energy somebody may take vibrant emotional energies of a person uh, and uh, which is called as rajasik energies and and somebody may go for making use of violent uh, uh, tamasik energies which which is known as tamasik energy so even that that uh, aggressive um, uh, aggressiveness of an employee aggressiveness of a human being can also be used for certain types of tasks where you need to motivate a person by your words you have to motivate them you have to to uh, uh, make them you have to uh, put them to the to this very task if you look at the, the the system of the the defense the area of defense there you require at times you require tamasic energy if you are standing on the border and you are basically having command and control over your entire team so that team at times need to be uh, motivated Uh, towards their 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 tamasic uh, energies that tamasic energy is also required because you are facing a war so you can't uh, expect your 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 uh, team to behave like a to 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 behave like a saint or using your spiritual energies so each and every type of energy has its own role and relevance 
and according to the to the time condition and circumstances you may make a good use of those uh, important uh, uh, levels of uh, energies and this is called energy channelizing system so when your subordinate is talking to you you don't need that tamasic energy you need either uh, that rajasic energy or sattvic energy that can very much suffice your purpose but when the person is actually facing the war and uh, the person is the your your team is facing the war you are standing at, at the border then of course you are facing your enemy and you have to uh, channelize your tamasic energy there your violent energy is there you have to be little aggressive so a little bit of aggression is also required so each and every type of energy has its own role and relevance and now it is up to you as a leader to realize that what type of energy is applicable in what circumstances so, and that is called the leadership that is the role of leadership so these three types of energies which i have discussed with you they have also they are getting reflection in the way power is uh, being used in different types of organizations the way the power is being applied in, in in different types of companies in different types of organizational setups sattvic power rajasic power and tamasic power they lead to silent vibrant and violent approaches to channelize your organizational energies now they actually act as a as an approach whether your approach is silent or vibrant or violent now according to your approach you would channelize your organizational energy the kind of leadership you have you may decide you may choose whether for me silent uh, approach is good or for me vibrant approach would be more appropriate or at times uh, i can i can continue my work with silent and vibrant energies and uh, violent can be used at 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 uh, certain selected situations only uh, which means you may use a combination of them or you may uh, choose to select any one of one of these three types of energies so they also get reflected in your interpersonal relationship and interpersonal dynamics so when we talk about group dynamics or interpersonal relationship at the in the in the organizational behavior these uh, three types of energies are being uh, uh, used and they are very important they are very prominent nowadays and uh, with the acceptance of the ideas of what you call as eq sq uh, emotional quotient and uh, spiritual quotient the companies they have started making positive use uh, of emotional and latent spiritual energies within the organizations even emotional quotient are nowadays being regarded as one of the most important type of energy where we are using those uh, energies within the organizations for the achievement of our goals so in nutshell i would say that kosha model is uh, uh, drawing our attention to use of organizational energy in positive manners now it is our positivity which is going to decide whether we are making whether we have a proper system of channelizing those uh, three types of energies or not and this is called the application of kosha model and we need to understand that yvk framework is uh, providing a foundational basis for human quality development which you call as hqd human quality development because its uh, roots can be traced to the indian guna theory of personality so point of origin is indian guna theory the indian theory of uh, uh, merits where we talk about the the qualities of a personality qualities of a human being so we have to understand that uh, it is acting this yvk uh, framework can may act as a foundational basis for human quality development and uh, yoga Im implies as, as i told you it implies harmony vedanta suggest need for eternal values which you call as value based uh, management and kosha leads us towards various levels of consciousness and it suggest a positive use of energies energies of consciousness so why we k all three are equally important if you are ignoring uh, uh, yoga then of course you would be compromising with the harmony in your business setup if you are ignoring vedanta it means you are somehow not sticking to the value based system you are not going to to create a foundation of uh, uh, comprising of eternal values so vedanta is suggesting us the need for eternal values and kosha is leading towards various levels of consciousness and uh, and it is uh, telling us how to make good use of energies of consciousness so each of the three uh, words yoga uh, vedanta and uh, uh, this what you call as kosha these three are important for us if we are really willing to to have to establish an organization which is uh, having eternal value which is value based which is harmonious and which is uh, having uh, you know the positive usage of energies of consciousness 
So, these three concepts that is yoga, harmony and harmonization, Vedanta which is known as eternal values and kosha and positive use of energy, they constitute three important pillars of what you call as new age management thought or 21st century management system. So, these three are acting as the significant pillars of Indian management and they are interrelated, uh, 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 th these three interrelated management processes, they are based on YVK which is of course the, uh, the management by harmony, management by values and management by consciousness. They constitute new foundations for organizational development and management. So, my dear learners, when we talk about Indian ethos in management, this uh, value based management or, or the management by harmony is now the order of the day. We no more talk about only management by walking around or management by objectives, but we do talk about management by values or management by harmony. So, the idea of Indian management could al also be captured by the phrase YVK and as, YVK as it constitutes the three pillars of Indian management. So, with this I am concluding uh, my today's discussion of uh, uh, this Indian ethos in management and I hope you must have understood these three important pillars of YVK and their relevance in uh, the Indian style of management. With this I am concluding my lecture today. I hope you must have enjoyed today's lecture of mine. Thank you so much.